Hey, welcome, welcome, come on in. Today, I am gonna share with you guys how I create cool countdowns in my videos. I've done some lately, top five, top 10, and tips and DaVinci Resolve. They look a little something like this. Number one, number one, number one, number one. The first thing. Number two. Number two. Tip number Tip three. three. And they're real easy to make. It's not hard. I want to show you guys how to do it in case you want to use something like this in your videos. A quick disclaimer, I don't actually create the graphic of the number itself. We're going to use some assets that we get from Motion Array that sponsor today's video. We're going to grab that, ones that we like, and then I'm going to show you how you can add in sound effects, a little bit of music, as well as record your voice directly into DaVinci Resolve, how we can throw it on there, create that echo and delay effect, and just really make a cool little transition when you're trying to list things out in your videos. So let's jump on the computer, grab our assets, jump into Resolve, and I'll show you how I create these cool countdown transitions. Let's go. So when it comes to a lot of these cool things we want to make in DaVinci Resolve here for our videos, you don't have to create everything from scratch, and really it, it just takes a lot of time if you're going to do that. So what I do, and what you guys should do too, to save time and just to get things that are maybe even better than you could make, definitely better than I can make, I'm going to jump onto Motion Array here, the sponsor of today's video, and the first thing I want to do is find a cool countdown that I like that I want to use in my video. So to do that, I'm going to come to the video section here at the top, and then I'm going to go to Motion Graphics. And then once I'm in the motion graphics section, I'm just going to search for a countdown. And once I do that, we're going to get a whole bunch of cool stuff here of all kinds of different countdowns. You can go from 60 seconds, some of them are 5 seconds, some of them are 2 seconds. And you're going to see that they all kind of just rotate through the numbers, which is perfectly fine. We're going to cut that video up and we're going to be able to use it to make our countdowns and our countdown transitions here uh, in DaVinci Resolve. So find one that you like. And like this guy right here, that's one of the ones we're going to be taking a look at. So it's real easy to just grab an asset that you want to use, download it, and we're going to go bring it into DaVinci Resolve. Now, the other thing you can look for while you're on Motion Array site here is some sound effects. If you want to include any kind of sound effect or any kind of other overlay, which you'll see in a minute here, I included another overlay on top of the numbers just to add some more visual interest to it. Um, or you can even include a little bit of music or a little stringer kind of thing. For example, if I come to the audio section here and I go to sound effects, and maybe I just want like a, a quick hit or some kind of quick little something. I can search through here and find, you know, just a little piece of music that's maybe, you know, four to five seconds long or something like that. So I can include that in the video. It really just depends on, you know, how much you want to add into this cool little effect and transition that we're going to do here. So let's take a look at this first example. I'm going to play the whole thing in its entirety. And then I'm going to show you the parts and pieces of how I put it together, as well as how I recorded my voice here in DaVinci Resolve. And we're going to add in the delay effect to kind of just make it sound cooler. So here is the final that we came up with once it was all complete. Check it out. Working in Resolve. So let's jump into these 10 tips. Number one, number one, number one, number one. The first thing is... So looking in Resolve here, the first thing that I got is the actual number. Now, if I want to see what my number was here, I can come up in my source view or bring it up. And here's what the numbers look like. There's no audio associated with it. It's just the numbers counting down from 10. So I'm actually doing a list starting at one and going up. So what I'm going to do is trim each number out and I'm going to bring that into my timeline. For example, you can see right here, I've created in and out points. So I'm going to you know, move ahead in my, in my viewer here to where the one starts. Right, right after the number two, I'm gonna hit I for in point, and then I'll go to the end and hit out point, or hit O for out point. And I can do that for each number that I wanna use in my timeline. So once I've got my in and out point selected, I'm gonna bring just that number down into my timeline. So now you can see we've got the number in the timeline. It does a cool little number one. Now, one thing that you can do, depending on how long you want this to be, is you can change the speed of it. So if I zoom in here, I can select my clip, Command or Control R to change or to bring up the speed controls. And then I can either stretch it out to make it go slower or I can shorten it to make it go a little bit faster, right? Just depends on how you want it to fit into your video clips. So a lot of them, they would take a little while for that number to, you know, show up on screen. So I would shorten it down a little bit to make it faster. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it at 100%. So now that we have our video set up with the number that we want to use for our countdown, the next thing to do in this simple example is to record your voice. Now you can do it just in your camera, say number one, number two, or tip one, tip two, whatever you want to say, record it in your camera. Or a lot of times I'll just record directly into DaVinci Resolve because that's easy and then it's right there in Resolve. Or you can record on your phone or however you record audio, doesn't matter. Just record whatever it is that you want to say 
bring that into Resolve, and then we're gonna start and work with it. So what I did was just filmed it on the camera. And if we look in Resolve, this is what it sounds like. So I brought it in, here's my clip right here, and I just lined it up with the beginning of my number. Here's what it sounds like recorded exactly how I did without making any changes. Number one. And that's it. So the first thing you wanna do, set the levels for your clip. To do that, I'm gonna come up to my mixer. I'm gonna to come to my track. I'm just gonna watch my meter and make sure it looks all right. Number one. And it's a little low, it's about minus 15 dB, so I wanna boost that up a little bit. I'm gonna select my clip. I'm gonna actually gonna to come to the inspector and I'm gonna boost this up a little bit. So I'm actually just gonna reset it to zero. Let's see how that looks on our levels here. Number one. All right, that's around minus 10 dB, minus nine. That looks good. Now you notice my voice is sounds normal, right? So what I wanna do is change the pitch of it so that it sounds a little cooler, a little more announcer-like. So to do that, have your clip selected come on up into your inspector and under this right here, the pitch section, you wanna take the semitones and reduce that. So you can do it however much you want. If I did say minus 11, here's what that sounds like. I go down. So that's a little too deep, right? It wasn't very clear. So I'm gonna come back to maybe minus six. Number one. So that's kind of cool. And if you wanna sound like a chipmunk, just push it the other way, right? Number one. You could do that too. So I'm gonna go back to minus six here. So that's good for correcting the pitch a little bit and just making it sound a little deeper and a little more announcer-like. Now we need to add the delay to our audio so that way it rings out, right? And we hear that delay of our, you know, whatever we said. So in this case, number one, we want number one, 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 one. That's what we want. Now you've got two ways to apply delay to this audio clip. You can apply it to the clip or to the entire track. Now we wanna apply it to the entire track, why? Because if we applied it to just the clip, then that echo is going to stop as soon as you get to the end of the clip. And we want that echo to ring out after the clip is done, right? Because I only said something for a second. I want that delay to ring out and ring out. So if I apply it to a track, the delay will continue to ring out after the clip is complete. But if I applied it to a clip, it's going to stop right at the end of that clip. So in order to apply the delay, we're just going to jump into Fairlight real quick because it love me some Fairlight. Musical notes at the bottom. Now on my track delay voice right here, I've got my clip right here and I wanna apply the effect to this track. So A6, here's my A6 track right here. I'm gonna go to my effects, click on the plus. We're gonna come down to delay, Fairlight effects and delay. So this is the delay menu here. Now you can adjust these settings however you want to make the delay sound however you'd like, but uh, let's just hear what it sounds like by default here without actually changing anything. Number one. Okay, so I want it to ring out a little more. That was a little quick. So a couple changes we can make is uh, I'm gonna increase the delay time a little bit, maybe increase the feedback just a little, change the settings a little. There we go, add a little more in there with the wet dry mix and let's hear how that sounds. Number one. All right, so that's not too bad. Maybe I want it to be even longer. I'm gonna change the delay time even more, make it a little longer and see how that sounds. Number one. All right, let's say I like that, that's kind of cool. And if you want to increase it even more, you can come over to your output and just crank up that wet dry mix. That's like how much of the effect are we applying on our track? So you can crank that up more if you want. It's up to you on, it's up to you on how you want that to sound. But this is the general idea of how you set up that delay so that it echoes and rings out. So that's good, I like that. Let's jump back into the edit tab. So back in the edit tab here, we can see I've got my number clip right here. And then I've got my audio clip right here. And here's what it sounds like when it's all together in this really basic example. So there you go. It's as easy as that. Just dropping in your number, add in a little audio, and it's a cool little transition there for your countdowns. Now let's say we want to make it a little bit cooler. We want to add some more into it. So let's move on to our example number two. Here's my example number two. Here's what it sounds like. Take a look. It is tip number one. Number two. Number two. Tip number two here. So what did you notice there? I added a few more things in. I added a little bit of music. I added in a sound effect for the transition starting and stopping. And then I also had my voice in there again as well. So if we move ahead here in my timeline, we take a look at my clips here. I'm just gonna change the view so you can see it a little bit better. Here's what we have. We have the video talking head of me. Then we've got our number, right? Which is gonna make our transition. And then it's another talking head of me after that. So I drop in my number where I want it. And again, I created this the same way. I downloaded a countdown, I think it was one through 10 that I liked. And then I just clipped out the number that I wanted to use with in points and out points, brought it into my timeline. And then I went and looked for some sound effects that I wanted to add in. Now I thought, hey, I wanna add in, you know, a little whoosh kind of noise in and out. And then I also want some kind of music underneath it, kind of like a, like a pad, you know, of, of just 
ambient noise to include underneath the number that we're seeing. So if I just solo my track here, here's the whooshes that I included. So I put those kind of where I put little transitions in between my clips here, just to kind of add a little bit of an effect to it. And it does help to add some transitions, you know, either in between your countdown clip and your, your talking head. Um, in this case, I do have screen recordings underneath it that I was also using in this video, but it just helps to transition and kind of make it flow a little bit better if you add some transitions in there and throw them in between your clips. Or you can also just fade out your clips here. If I zoom in a little, you can see I faded these two clips out a little bit. There's a lot of ways that you can do it, but here's just two ideas of things you can do. So then I've also got down here, I have a little synth track and here's what that sounds like. Right, so nothing fancy, but just a little little pad under there that just kind of makes some cool ambient noise, right? And I found this on Motion Array just by searching their sound effects, right? I searched for things under five seconds or whatever it is and just went through until I found something that I liked and this is what I ended up with. And then finally, I have my voice. I recorded myself saying number two and here's what that sounds like. Number, number two. two. Now it has the delay on there that we already created because it's on my delay voice track. And I also changed the pitch of it already. So if I click on the clip here and we take a look in the inspector, you can see here I used minus three semitones because that's what I thought sounded kind of cool. And then we've got the delay that we've already set up on our track. So it's going to delay out for us. Now if you just want to see what that sounded like before I did any of that, just drag her down to a new track here. I'm going to solo that. I'm going to reset my pitch. And here's what it sounded like when I first recorded it. Number two. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Number two. And then I edited it so I can make it sound kind of cooler in the way I wanted it to. So when you put that all together, here's what it looks and sounds like both the end video as well as what it looks like playing through the timeline. Did you resolve? So that is tip number one. Number, number two. two. Tip number two here. So there you go. Really easy to take some stock footage, some stock sound effects, a little pad underneath put them together, make a little transition there, and then record your voice and throw it underneath really quick and really easy. So with the last example here, I did use some different sound effects and let's just take a look at what this looks like. Here's the example number three with the final video. Rename your tracks, that's tip number two. Tip number three, you can, so what did we do here? I took it to another level. What I did, if we take a look on the timeline here, is I had several different clips, right? The first clip that I had was my number, right? So if I come in here and go on top, we've got the number, right? Number three. And again, I just made in points and out points, grabbed my number and brought it into the timeline. And then I thought, hey, what else can I put on here that'll make it look, I don't know, jazz it up a little bit, make it look a little cooler. Well, I found this graphic of a little swirly particle thing coming in. So if I show you just that, here's what that looks like. Tip, tip three. three. So I thought that was kind of cool. I'm like, hey, we'll throw that on top of the number and just kind of layer our effects and it's gonna look pretty cool. Now, one thing that you should know when you're layering your effects, if I come in and I select my clip, you wanna come into your inspector and then come down to composite and you wanna change the composite mode, right? Right here. Right now I have it on add, which means it's gonna just layer things up and allow me to see things through the effects that I have. So if I change this back to normal, all I'm gonna see is just this one on the top here. That's all I'll see. So I need to change that to add so that way I can see it on top of my numbers because anything that's black will, will kind of be see-through then. So that's real important when you're kind of layering things up is checking the composite mode and making sure that you can see everything, you know, on top of another. This way you don't have to do any masking or anything like that. You can just layer them up. Now, another little bonus tip here for you is that if I have my number, so let's just turn off our little swirl layer on my number here. And let's say I had, you know, it, it overlapped a video of me talking a little bit. Well, in that case, you also want to, select that clip, come up and change your composite mode to add, right? Maybe they're, they're just blending together a little bit or you want that number to appear on top of you a little bit. So if I come back here in our, in our sample clip and I come to the beginning, see right here how it starts to fade on top of me, right? We can see the number coming in and then we see the swirls coming in, right? We see how it, it kind of starts to fade on top of me. So in order to do that, I change the composite mode to add on both those clips. And then you can see my video underneath those other two clips. Real important that that's a, a key thing when you're doing overlays and, and uh, just trying to put them on top of your video. I work with overlays a lot and that's how I do it. You change the composite mode. So now that I'm happy with uh, the way these clips are looking, one other thing I did do with this clip or these two clips is actually I slowed down the clip a little bit, right? The numbers in the 
stock footage that I got, they were a little fast and I wanted to slow them down a little. So if I select my clip, open the read time controls with commander control R, you can see I slowed it down to 30%. Now it's, it's going slower. It's taking a little more time so I can get my voice in there, some little sound effects and, uh, and just make it look a little bit cooler in the way that I want. Now, one, one tip here for you is if you're slowing down some of these motion graphics, one tip is you want to select your clip. Again, come to your inspector all the way at the bottom, retime and scaling. You want to change these top two options, retime process, change that to optical flow, and then motion estimation, motion estimation, little tongue twister. You want to change that to one of the higher settings, and that's going to help resolve, create frames where there might not be any. If you slow down a clip like I did here, slowing it down to 30%, it didn't have the frames in there. It would look a little jittery if I didn't change these settings here. So that is another key tip when you're speeding up or slowing down any uh, motion graphics or things like that, that you might grab from motion ray or anywhere else. So big tip right there. Then once I had my video set, I thought, Hey, what kind of sounds can I add in that could make this sound kind of cool? So again, I searched motion ray, just looking for things and ideas of things I thought might be kind of cool. And uh, here's the sounds that I came up with. So I'm just going to play them one at a time here for you. Here's the first sound that I came up with. And I came up with that because those little sparks kind of flying in. I was like, hey, that kind of sounds like a spark type thing. So let's go with that. The next one that I found was uh, more of a, a whoosh transition kind of sound. And that would be because those elements are flying in, the lights are flying in. And then finally, I added uh, a little bit of like a pad underneath, right? And here's what that sounded like. Right? And then I layered them up the way I thought sounded kind of cool. And finally, on top of that, I added my voice, right? And here's my voice. And I already corrected the pitch like I showed you earlier. And the delay is already on our track. So I already have that set up. And here's what my voice sounded like. Tip, tip three. three. Oh, and actually, it sounds like the pitch wasn't on there. So if I just select my two clips here... I'm going to come to pitch in my inspector right here, and I'm just going to drop my semitones down. We'll do, let's see, minus six again, and here's what it sounds like. Tip, tip, three, three, three. All right, not too bad, right? You get the idea. You fiddle with it. You make it sound as cool as you want or however you want. You're good to go. So now when I start to layer these things up, and if I select just these couple tracks here, here's what it sounded like when I layered them up. Tip, tip, three, three. three. So there you go. It's real quick and easy to start to layer things and just make a cool effect, right? And I didn't have to create anything from scratch other than recording my voice. Super easy, We're right into Resolve, right into your camera, whatever it might be. But you just take those cool effects and you layer them up. And that's why a lot of times for me, when I'm looking at how do I create something cool or a cool transition or countdown, I just got to jump on somewhere like Motion Ray and just look through the different overlays or different assets that they have and think, how can I use this to make something that's kind of cool, visually appealing, uh, something that, you know, is going to keep your attention or just just something that kind of looks cool. Honestly, most of the time, I'm just looking for something that looks kind of cool. So that is how you create a cool graphical transition countdown type of thing here in DaVinci Resolve. It's real easy to go grab some stock video, stock footage, maybe motion graphics like we did here some sound effects, and you just got to learn how to piece these things together to really make something that's kind of cool and interesting for your videos. And being a part of a website like Motion Array is really just going to help you speed up your workflow by allowing you to grab these different assets, put them together, and make really awesome things in your videos without having to do a whole lot of work. If you have questions, definitely comment down below. I'm more than happy to help you guys out and uh, just answer any questions you might have about putting something like this together. If you're interested in Motion Array, link in the description below. You can save 50 bucks on a year subscription to Motion Array. I highly recommend them. I use tons of their assets all the time in my videos. A lot of overlays and, and graphics. There's a ton of great stuff there. Check it out. I think they have a trial. You can give it a shot, see if you like it. But that's what I use to create a lot of these things because it's already made for you. You don't have to spend tons of time creating these things from scratch or learning how to do it. You just got to think about the creative end of it of how do we start to put these things together. A big thank you to Motion Ray for sponsoring today's video. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you use these techniques, Tag me in a video or drop a comment somewhere with a link to a video. I want to check it out and see what you guys are creating out there because I learned from you guys just as much as you guys learned from me. So with that said, I look forward to seeing your videos and seeing you guys in the next one. All right, guys, take it easy. Peace.